Now let's look at what Scripture is. And the first and most important word here is the word inspired or God-breathed. The word inspired or inspiration was used in the Old King James translation of the New Testament from the 16th century. And the problem with the word inspiration is that it is used in different ways today. I feel inspired when I listen to great music. Or we say that a sports team is inspired when they put in a great performance. So inspiration needs to be explained. Now, the word that is used here in the original is theopneustos. It's really a combination of two words, theos for God and neuptos for breathed. So literally, what the scripture says here is that it is God breathed. And modern translations are really helpful in giving a very literal translation of this word theopneustos. The New International Version says all scripture is God-breathed. The English Standard Version says all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work. Now, the meaning is not simply that God breathed into the Bible. The meaning of this word is that God breathed out the Bible. The Bible is God breathed. He he breathed out his own word. So when we speak of scripture being inspired, The inspiration that we're referring to here is not simply that the human authors of the Bible were inspired when they wrote or that the readers of the Bible are inspired when we read, but that the Bible itself is breathed out by God. All scripture is breathed out by God himself. Now, some people deny this inspiration. They do not believe that the Bible is inspired. They don't believe that it is breathed out by God. They think of the Bible as being like a human document, that it's man's word about God rather than God's word to man, that it therefore reflects man's evolution from ancient and crude and primitive thoughts about God to thoughts that are more refined. And because the evolution of thought continues, Therefore, the scripture cannot be authoritative and final. So the Bible then becomes an important voice in our conversation, a kind of book in the library. This is what the Bible says. What do you think? And then there are some people who want to locate inspiration in the hearers or in the readers of the Bible. Uh, so that the Bible becomes the Word of God when we feel that God is really speaking to us through it. Uh, But the Bible is the Word of God, irrespective of our feelings about it. The Bible is God's Word, whether we read it or whether we ignore it, whether we like it or whether we loathe it, whether we believe it or whether we despise it. Now, this is really important in answering the person who says, Well, I read the Bible, but I don't feel that God is speaking to me. Well, the Bible doesn't become the word of God when I feel it is speaking to me. It is the word of God. So you have some people who deny the inspiration of the Bible, some who locate the inspiration in the reader or the hearer of the Bible. Then you have some who limit inspiration to certain parts of the Bible. The Bible contains the word of God they would like to say. It's inspired in parts. But of course, the question there is, well, who decides which parts? Often that's stated as being that the Bible is inspired in its doctrine, but not necessarily in its history. And this approach allows the Bible to be shaped to suit preference. So, for example, affirming the teaching of Jesus about salvation, but then When it comes to the Bible's teaching about sexual ethics, to say, oh, well, that was just for a different time and these are not the words of God for us today. That's very, very different from believing what the Bible says about itself, that it is theopneustos, it is God-breathed. We believe that God has spoken in his word, that all scripture is breathed out 
by God. And God never changes. And since God has spoken, since the scripture is breathed out by God himself, it follows that what God said in the scripture is what God says to us today. The Bible is more than the word that God has spoken. It really is the word that God speaks to us today. And, you know, you see this within the scripture itself. For example, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 17, notice the present tense when Peter quotes scripture in his sermon on the day of Pentecost. He says this, And in the last days it shall be God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, Peter is quoting from the prophet Joel. God had said hundreds of years before the time of Peter, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And Peter quotes this. But when he does, he doesn't say God declared I will pour out my spirit. He says, God declares, I will pour out my spirit. In other words, this is more than a word God spoke in the past. This is what God is saying to us today. Now, do you see that this conviction that what God has said in the scripture, rightly understood and applied, is what he is saying to us today, that conviction is at the heart of, of authentic Christian ministry. And you don't just find it in Acts in chapter 2. There are many examples. Look, for example, at Hebrews in chapter 3. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. Again, notice the present tense. The writer of Hebrews is quoting from Psalm 95. These were words that God breathed out to David hundreds of years before the time that the letter of Hebrews was written. But the writer of Hebrews quotes these words in the present tense. This is what the Holy Spirit says. This is what God says to us today. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. See, Scripture is not only the word God has spoken because he is the unchanging God. It is the word that God speaks to us today.